What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragonflight video. This is for Resto Shaman this time. I hope you guys are all doing very, very well. I want to talk about basically a, a passive Resto Shaman build setup that I think a lot of you guys are going to love. And it's something that I have been trying in my keys over the past couple of weeks. And I'm really, really loving it. So I'm going to go over the entire build and the talent trees. I'm going to talk about like the pros and, and cons of it a little bit, talk about like how it does its healing. And then I'm going to get right into this Everbloom, ever bloom, no, uh, Throne. I did a 22 Throne with it. I've been doing other keys as well on with this build. We've done some 23s, did a Black Rook Hold, did a Atal Dazar, and then we've been doing 22s on Throne, Dawn of the Infinite, Waycrest Manor 21's 22 on Dark Herb. That was overtime, so we haven't quite got there yet. But the keys, like this is a viable build. And that's what I want to try and show you. It's very, very viable in the higher keys, okay? I promise you that you'll be able to do it. So what is this build? Here's what you're not going to be casting with this build. You are not going to be casting Chain Heal. We do not take Ancestral Reach or Flow of the Tides. We are not taking a Tidebringer to make it faster. We're not taking High Tide. We're not even pressing Chain Heal. We literally don't press Chain Heal, <clears throat> okay? That's how this build works. It is on my bars, but I don't actually even press it. And if we look at um, some of the keys that I've been healing, you can see that this is how this build kind of ends up looking at the end of the dungeon footage in the throne. I will show you exactly what it looks like. Here's how this build works. There's an enormous amount of passive healing that you just activate at the beginning of a fight so that it's rolling throughout the fight and does a whole bunch of healing for you so that you don't have to triage quite as much. But you still have your triage tools. You can still smack somebody with a big healing surge or a big healing wave in particular healing wave but there are multiple do uh hot sorry going on in the background right now we've got riptide you've got healing stream totem earth shield prox earth living weapon is ticking in the background healing rain is healing people on the ground even you got tidal reservoir which is your tier set bonus that's healing people over time as well and then you have prox of ancestral awakening that is all happening in the background that is most of our healing. I mean, you can see that Riptide's 23% of our healing. If you combine all this stuff together, it's about 50% of our healing is just going to be passive, um, under the hood, happening all the time. You just have to kind of maintain it, and it's not that difficult to do. Yes, I'm using Healing Stream Totem instead of Cloudburst. I'll do a little segment here on Cloudburst. I, I really think Cloudburst is a wonderful ability, and it's very, very good, especially in Raid, but it's also really good in Mythic+. Plus. The reason it's not very good is because most people have a really difficult time using it properly and actually getting the huge procs that you're looking for when you activate the Cloudburst, right? The problem with Cloudburst is that you have to put it on the ground, then you have to actually do a whole bunch of healing, and then you have to detonate it at the right time so that it's actually topping people off or or healing an enormous amount of healing for you to have invested all that time and energy into it. And honestly, eight, nine times out of 10, lots of players just struggle to get the right detonation. It ends up, it ends up just overhealing a massive amount, which is what happens with me for the most part. So I just use Living Stream. And this makes your Healing Stream totems absolutely insane. They are very, very strong. Another big difference is that you can have two Healing Stream totems down at a time instead of just having one Cloudburst at a time. Healing Stream totem essentially single target heals one of your allies every once in a while. But because of Living Stream, that ramps up by 10% every single time it goes off. Okay, let me find a better... Uh, I don't have the throne. We tried the 23 dawn. Here we go. So, oh, that's not going to work either because we have the cheating at the end. Let's just look at the, uh, let's just look at another throne that I did. That's a good one to look at. So here, healing stream totem, 83,000. You can see it crit for 83,000. That is as much as a healing surge. And it does this multiple times. I mean, it crit 127 times. I can have both healing streams totems down at a time, and they can both be ramping up, getting stronger and stronger, and eventually critting people for this amount, 83,000, which is outrageous. That's a lot of healing, and it's a lot of free healing that you don't have to spend any time doing. You just plop these suckers down, and away you go. Obviously, Riptide's going to be our biggest heal because of the 
uh, tier set bonus, making it really, really strong. And the talents that I'm taking buff Riptide as well. I have Torrent, which up, up, uh, buffs the initial hit of Riptide by 20%. And then we have Wave Speaker's Blessing, which again buffs it as well. We have Primordial Wave to add another Riptide. And we have Primal Title Core to keep adding more Riptides, man, over and over and over again. It's very, very strong. Of course, that entire time we're digging for um, and, uh, Ascendance procs with Deeply Rooted, which is really, really good. Lots of people don't take Earth Living Weapon. I think that's a giant mistake. It ends up doing 5 to 6 to 7% of my healing most of the time and again it's another thing that's ticking in the background it's passive and it really helps you out so those are all the passive components riptide healing stream totem earth living weapon the tier set bonus title reservoir healing rain earth shield procs and then ancestral awakening are all contributing to healing in the background when you're in trouble when you really need to heal somebody you can press healing surge you can press healing wave and if you really have to heal multiple people at the same time you can press spirit link ascendance or you can press ancestral guidance those are the cooldowns that you have available all three of those cooldowns, by the way, this is kind of a special niche for Resto Shaman. Ancestral Guidance, Ascendance, and Spirit Link all take healing that you're doing and then evenly distribute it to other players that are affected by it. So Spirit Link Totem redistributes health. Your Ascendance, whenever you heal while you're in Ascendance, it's going to duplicate that healing and spread it out to a bunch of other people. AG is going to... Um, copy 25 percent of the healing that you've done and convert it into healing on up to three so it copies it and spreads it around right that is like a niche for resto shaman you can hit a single target with a huge heal and it's going to copy that and distribute it to the rest of your team therefore becoming aoe healing so that you don't have to actually press an aoe heal like chain heal or uh, wellspring or downpour or whatever you don't have to press any of those buttons you can just kind of spot heal people like a paladin does and you'll be copying all that depending on what cooldown you have rolling. That's kind of how this build works. You have a bunch of passive healing going on in the background, just keeping people alive. If people start getting low enough, you can smack them with a really hard triage spell like Healing Wave or Healing Surge if you're running out of time. And then if you really need to take care of multiple people at the same time, press Ascendance, press AG, drop a Spirit Link to help distribute all the healing that the big single target healing that you're doing and to distribute it amongst the group that's kind of how this plays okay that's that's how it works now let me dive into the footage really uh we'll just jump into the dungeon i'll show you kind of how this looks in practice oh, this are. is the opening pull here this is a 22 throne of tides so this is on tyrannical week i do want to make sure i just highlight that this is a really tough dungeon on tyrannical week and you can see right out of the gates we are struggling a little bit i drop a link there's an example right there of, of where I am really struggling to keep multiple people alive at the same time. I've got Ravenous Pursuit. It looks like Lynx is about to die. And at the same time, I'm dying. And at the same time, the warrior starts dying. So I'm like, you know what? Screw this. We're just going to link everybody together. This is a huge opening pull. And uh, we need to make sure that everybody stays alive. Okay? Now, I've got this um, Drown on my Hunter. So I need to triage heal him really, really hard. So I can do that with my Healing Surge. Get him back to full. Pretty quickly, there's another healing surge, and he's up again. Our triage healing is one of the strengths of Resto Shaman. So all that you really need to do is to provide that passive healing in the background to keep bumping people up so that they're healthy, and then you can triage the people who are really getting wrecked individually, and it works out really, really well. Let me just turn the volume down a little bit more. So uh, here's the mini boss, of course. you got to be careful. i got an Ascendance proc right there, which is really good. Helps you heal people. The Ascendance procs sometimes go off at a really bad time, but lots of times they go off at a really, really good time. And that's it's awesome to sort of see that. But again, here, I'm just dropping my healing stream totems, and I'm riptiding people. And you can see I'm doing 97k on the side of your screen there. It doesn't really look like I'm doing a whole lot, but I have four tidal reservoirs up right now. This is why you want to do this. Your healing wave and your healing surge will add a tidal reservoir. Chain Heal does this too, but it's much cheaper to use healing wave to do it. And I have four of them up right now. So they're all ticking with my Riptide healing. It's all pouring into everybody. I also have the healing stream totems in the background. And we're almost doing 100k HPS on this pole without really putting too much effort into it. The other really good thing about this is that it doesn't really cost a lot of mana. This is one of the best parts about this build. It's very, very mana efficient. Chain Heal is an awful spell on our mana bar. It is so brutal how much it costs. And with this build, you basically don't spend that much mana. You're mostly Riptiding and Healing Waving. Healing Waving as much as you possibly can in order to uh, get the healing. And you'll just end up doing 100k. Another really important thing that I want to highlight with any build that you're running as a healer right now. The damage in dungeons is incredibly spiky. It is very, very 
volatile. People's health bars are just yo-yoing all over the place. That's why I like the passive healing from this build. It helps to keep people kind of at a level um, uh, health points, a level hit point percentage. And then you can obviously top them off with big triage. Another thing that you should do, bring a trinket. You should get a healing trinket. Honestly, there's never been a better time to have healing trinkets. I have this touch of the voodoo from Atal Dazar. It just did 656k healing to somebody there because they were about to die. So... This is how valuable these kinds of things can be, especially, like I said, because the damage is so spiky. Um, you can really just f forget about somebody entirely and just press a trinket on them, and then there you go. It's like having a cooldown. I get the drown on me. Not a big deal. We're going to healing surge it up, even though it is it is really difficult to get through it. We get through it with a couple of healing surges. There you go. Again, another strength of Resto Shaman, the ability to do that. Let me get to the bosses. I really do want to show you the boss fights because they're where the um, build really comes together, I think. Let me just get past this part here. We'll get uh, Lady Najatar. So, or Lady Najatar. At the beginning, she's going to zap individual people. So you have to be very, very careful about that, right? There's one zap right there. Look how much damage it did on Tyrannical. It did 65, 70% of his health. So I need to react quickly with the healing surge. I need to do that multiple times to multiple people. So this is a... You have to manage your mana. Manage your mana. You have to be really, really careful with your mana. Otherwise... People are going to die. Now, he got hit by a secondary mechanic. He got knocked in the air by the blue, so not much I can do about that. Here's an Ascendance proc going off. Look at the damage that just bounced there. Look how much healing we're doing. Again, this is primarily with Healing Wave. I'm just able to grab people's health bars and just throw them right back up to 100 with a huge Healing Wave. Mostly because of my mastery, actually, but also because that's just how this build functions. Now, we have the AoE portion where there's lots of people moving around. It's very, very hectic. I have to watch my feet. Yeah, this fight mostly requires you to do big triage. It's good to have some passive healing going on, but realistically speaking, in phase one, that's where the danger is for us. You need to be triage healing really, really hard. So drop a couple rip tides and then use your healing waves or do a healing surge to get people up. It's okay to do it that way. There's a, Look at the damage there. I have to be really quick about this. Using your nature swiftness is really good here. Smack one guy, instant nature swiftness. Smack another guy with a big healing surge and it will take care. I just did it right there on the warrior. So that's how you're going to kind of take care of that. Okay. Now, I do want to get to the next boss because he's, he's even worse. He has a really good mix, actually, of damage types. So here is Commander Ulth uh, Ulthok. He's going to do a big slam that's going to do a lot of damage to us after bubbling Fissure. Oh, he just did it right there. So we move over here. Now, I need to use cooldowns to mitigate the damage of the slam, but I also need healing going on in the background to mitigate the dot that he puts on everybody. Everybody's bars has this purple stuff. This is a dot. So I have both healing stream totems down. Look at their health bars recovering here. Yes, we're in a link to prevent some of the damage, but it's about the riptides, and it's about the healing stream totems going off. I do pop AG, and AG spreads out all the healing to make sure that we're able to get through that. And again, I probably used too many cooldowns there, but because I have the voodoo trinket, for the next one, it's okay. We can use the voodoo trinket. Here comes the second shockwave. Boom, we get knocked back. I'm going to voodoo trinket somebody. You can see uh, bow job is just going right to full. See how much healing that did? I'm just going to show you one more time. I'm pretty sure I drop it on him. Here comes the knockback. I drop trinket on bow job. Watch what this trinket does. It's just going to send his health right to full. Ding, 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 ding. There you go. So I don't have to worry about him. I can riptide everybody else. I can healing wave, healing surge. There we go. We're triaging people. And it works out. All the tidal reservoirs are keeping us going, right? So this is how this kind of looks in a realistic scenario. You get big uh, burst damage on everybody that you have to recover from. And then you have a dot to take care of as well. And if you had a cloud burst totem, it wouldn't be doing the same kind of healing that the healing stream totems are able to do because they're just tick, 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 ticking away, right? Instead of doing one big burst. Here's a shockwave. I'm very poorly positioned here. I pop my, or I got an ascendance proc, which was awesome. There you go, and it's spreading out all the healing to, for us to recover. I get a Primordial Wave into double Healing Stream Totem is down now, into a Healing Wave, and boom, we're kind of top back up again. Lynx gets kicked in the face right there. But there you go. That's how we recover. Even though I had a really poor position there, I needed to be in a better spot. We were able to recover, okay? That's how that kind of looks when you're looking at Burst plus a bunch of uh, dots going on at the end as well. Now, I want to get to one of the best fights. I end up dying here, which is kind of unfortunate. One of the most difficult fights, I think, for healers on Tyrannical Week is going to be this next guy, Mindbender uh, Gersha. This guy puts a really nasty Flame Shock dot on somebody at the beginning of the fight. You can see it just went off on me. I just went up, sorry, I'll back up a little bit here. This Flame Shock on Tyrannical Week ends up doing like 50% of your health just from the initial cast. Watch my health bar here. 
835K. He hits me with it. I go down to 400K. That did 430,000 damage. Just the upfront tick of Flame Shock did that much. This entire fight is about managing your dispel. You have to dispel as quickly as you possibly can. But as the fight goes on, he starts putting out this Flame Shock faster than you can dispel it. So you have to find other ways. You got to get a little bit creative with how you're going to deal with it. So you can see there's one on me right now. My dispel is up. It's all good. I can dispel myself. But guess what? He's going to put another one out right now. It's on the warrior. My dispel is three seconds away. He's going to die in that time if I'm not careful here. So I make sure to triage him. Again, I hit him with a nature swiftness. I use a very kind of a mini cooldown right there to get him up. Now there's one on the hunter. I can dispel the hunter. Keep him alive. This is kind of the difference. You have to basically start choosing between dispelling somebody. Now it's on the hunter. I have no dispel. And I need to use a cooldown. You go dispel one person, use a cooldown over here. Dispel this guy, use a cooldown over here. I think I also use my racial. So I, I pop my ascendance here just to cover this. So now there's two out. Now I'm not going to, I don't think I need to use my dispel. Oh, I know. I do dispel him. Sorry. But I'm, use, I'm covering this with an, an ascendance proc, right? Um, an Ascendance cooldown, which I'm not going to have later, but that's okay. You have to use them at some point. There, I can Dispel Bartle again. See how much damage it does? If I'm not responding very, very quickly, he's just going to die. So this is why this is one of the hardest fights. I use my Racial right there, my Dwarf Racial, to get rid of that one. So that's saving my Dispel. And now the next person that he hits, which is the Warrior, I can Dispel him immediately. And now I'm kind of back on track, right? So this entire fight, you have to figure out how to use your tools that you've got at your disposal to handle the people who you're not able to dispel. That's what you have to do. And then you have to kind of like bridge the difference between the people you can dispel and the people you can't. I think upcoming in a second here, I end up using my Spirit Link Totem right there because I, I ran out of dispels. I'm like, you know what? Let's just share the load here. There we go. I dispel that guy. I, I'm tanking my damage, which is fine. I still have my defensive, which is great because he's about to hit me for a third time in a row with another Flame Shock. So I think I just popped my defensive. Maybe I didn't. Oh, yeah, I didn't even pop my defensive. I should have. I should have defensive there. And there we go. We finally get through that entire phase. The Mindbender guy hops off of our friend. And now the fight switches from being single target triage to being AOE. He has this, these shadows that are bouncing around and just causing damage. This is perfect for us. We just use healing stream totems, rip tides. This is perfect for our build. We're able to just slowly and surely get everybody back up to full health while this shadow is bouncing around. And I can fill in with some healing waves if I need to. But that's how that goes. That fight is like incredibly difficult triage healing that moves into... Um, you know, having healing over time, bouncing on everybody at the same time, which is really, really great. That's what you kind of want to be doing there. I had to sustain about 152k HPS in order to make that work. So that's how that kind of goes. Here's the final gauntlet. A lot of healing required here. The most difficult thing here is the swell plus the little guys dying. When the little guys die, the little like slime dudes, they put this um, magic uh, debuff on us that makes us it increases the amount of magic damage that we take and when the sentry starts pressing swell we take increased damage um, a lot of increased damage so you need to be very careful about that see this book i got another ascendance proc that was very very lucky that's how this build works though if you're pressing riptide enough you will get ascendance procs you will you have to trust that it's going to happen just keep pressing riptides you can see i almost always have five riptides out all the time that's what you want to be striving for now we have 10 stacks of this dot this is very dangerous if we had somebody doing the swell right now, we would basically be dead. Now, we get up here, and he starts swelling, and then all the little guys start dying. So I'm like, you know what? We might have to just spirit, spirit link this. There we go. This is how you handle this situation. We're not using chain heal, right? So we're just going to spirit link. And I got a proc on Ascendance because I'm pressing Riptide so much, and I was able to recover there. So again, in situations where four or five people are all dying at the same time, you do need to use Ancestral Guidance or Ascendance or Spirit Link to cover it and it to also spread the healing out that you're doing because you're doing mainly single target triage healing for the most part right that's how it's working here comes a bunch of swell or a bunch of uh debuffs here everybody's taking a lot of damage like i did press one chain heal there that was a moment of weakness i apologize that was the one chain heal i think i had for the entire dungeon so that was uh that was a mistake i i apologize for that <laughs> here we go we got 22 stacks of the debuffs so you have to be very careful not to pull uh the next guys we just got to wait for a second for the debuff to fall off and it's falling off right now so we're good we can pull these guys here's the double swell again very dangerous even though it's um like on fortified week this will be very very dangerous i i will need to have popped 
I have to pop Ancestral Guidance or Ascendance here in order to live through this on four to five weeks. It's thankfully tyrannical, so I can just do my healing here. I think I do pop AG. Anyway, watch AG. Just pumps everybody. Again, we're doing single target healing, and it's duplicating that and giving it to other people. We're doing 134k HPS right now. This is the kind of numbers that are required in this high of a key. So, But just to give you another sense of, of what this looks like. Okay, let's get to the final boss. I'm going to drink one more time. The most dangerous part of this fight for us is when this moment is happening right here. When the debuffs are being dropped and people are trying to stack very closely together. They will take a lot of damage from the initial hit from this. Watch their health. So you have to be very ready for this. They go to about half, half HP and then they're stuck standing in it for a little bit longer. So they lose even more HP. So you need to respond quickly with like a healing surge or a really fast healing wave in order to make that happen okay just be ready you have to be ready right off the bat then the ads are going to spawn after he, the boss does his roar you cannot stand in these purple swirlies or you will die so i need to move away from this purple swirly or else i'm going to die and then the ads will start uh spawning or casting spells you can use cap totem here cap totem is really good here to stop them from casting inky blast by the time they're done being stunned they will all be dead which is very very nice and then you rinse and repeat right so when you want to use your cooldowns here is when people start getting these purple circles right here. You want to use stuff like Spirit Link, use your Ascendance. Unfortunately, Bartle was standing in the black stuff. He didn't realize the black stuff is always expanding in this fight. He didn't realize he was standing in it. He ends up dying. There's really nothing I can do about that. But we end up resing him, which is fine. I think on the next one, I end up casting uh, Spirit Link to keep everybody alive. Just don't be afraid to use your cooldowns. That's when you want to use them is when everybody is forced to like drop their puddles and have to soak a little bit there right so here comes the next set i think right here <clears throat> i'm going to show you my spirit link usage so here it is right here we're all stacked up i'm like you know what screw it i'm going to spirit link there we go let's keep them all alive the hunters get out right away which is good i took a little bit too long getting out there but it is what it is then i can triage heal again we're doing about 113k right now here comes the roar the roar does a lot of damage as well got an ascendance proc which is awesome again if you're doing the build correctly you will get Ascendance procs. Don't worry about it. You will get them. I'm cap toteming again these ads so they don't cast their Inky Blast. It basically, if you take the double cap totem node, it literally gets rid of their entire existence. They don't even get to cast anything. And then we have one more. I believe I pop Ascendance here, if I'm not mistaken. No, I didn't actually. It must be on a different one. Anyway, we're just triage healing. Again, it's just boom. You do so much. Healing Wave and Healing Surge hits so hard. It's, it's really crazy how good those things are. Okay, then we get to the final fight, Ozumat, and we end up killing him. I got 32 points for that. Let's go to 42105. That's where we are looking at the overall. Okay, so there we go. There's the touch of the voodoo, which is really, really good. I I'm going to cursor here. There we go. So here's the numbers overall. Riptide, 21%. Healing Stream Totem, 11.6. Let's look at all the passive stuff. Riptide and Healing Stream Totem, that's 33% right there. Earth Shield, 7%. So we're at 40% of our healing. Earth Living Weapon is 5%. So we're at 45, right? Healing Rain is 5%. That's 50% of our healing. Tidal Reservoir ends up being 3.4%. and ancestral. So that's 7% right there. So we're at about 52, 53% of our healing is just passive healing plus procs going off. I didn't even include restorative mists, which is the ascendance proccing. I should probably throw that in there, to be honest. So it's looking more like north of 60% of our healing is coming from passive healing going off or procs. Okay, that is how good this is. And I promise you, if you look at all the different dungeons that are in the rotation right now, this is something that is absolutely required. There are so many dungeons that require a lot of persistent healing to be going off all the time we just looked at throne of tides let's look at everbloom right think about archmage soul at the beginning of that fight she does her big fire thing that's just hurting everybody if you have healing stream totems down and riptides going you are gonna keep people up so they don't get absolutely wrecked by that mechanic when it's going off it's really really good for that right um Yal knew when he spawns when she spawns when he spawns the ad there's a lot of persistent damage going off on everybody you want your healing stream totems down very, very good. Ancient Protectors, they're doing pulsing damage the entire time. 
And then, all, obviously, people are taking a lot of extra damage from, like, the charge and the green puddles that get put on the ground. But there's pulsing damage going off the entire time, which makes it very, very good for these passive effects that are going off in the background. Think about Dark Heart Thicket, right? The dragon fight, when he starts pushing you back, right, with his little wind effect, that's doing ticking damage to everybody. Tick, 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 tick. They'll go down right to zero if you're not helping them. Have healing stream totems on the ground. Have riptides out already, ready to go. Have your tidal reservoirs prepped and ready to go. They'll be distributing health as well. You can just uh, manage these kinds of uh, effects. You can manage these boss fights with a build that prioritizes this kind of healing, where you've got passive healing going on in the background, and it represents about 50 to 60% of your overall healing. It's going to be really, really strong for you. I promise. So... Let me know what you guys think. I wanted to do like a really big deep dive on this build, what I've been doing over the last week and how much I've been enjoying it. It's pushing plus 22s and plus 23s. It's totally viable, guys. So don't don't let anybody tell you that you have to take Cloudburst Totem, that this is a troll build, that you can't like that you you can never take Earth Living Weapon. Just don't let people say this stuff to you. It's really stupid. Um, don't let anybody tell you that you must take High Tide or you must take all the Chain Heal talents because they're just superior to anything else. You can run this build and you can do it right now in whatever keys that you're running. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from all of you guys. And um, I'm going to be doing more videos on Shaman. I'll probably do some more on Resto Shaman. So let me know what you guys want to see. If you want to see some other build or something else that I'm doing, I will link this talent tree down below uh, in, in the uh, description. So let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Love you all. I will see you in the next one.